Okay, so the uh, 10 year yields here, we've been looking at this as a wave three here with an A and a B and a C for wave four here. I'm not really getting a nice impulse wave here, so I may need to look at that in three waves. And if I'm looking at it in three waves, then it's a possibility that this wave four and wave C can be moved over to here. And where's my drawing tools here? So we can see this little one and two here. So this will be the third wave moving up here. So for a C wave, we'd be looking for five waves to the upside um, into our 61.8% roughly sort of space. So we could go to here and then we could come down for three, four and five at that point. And there's a pretty good... Um, reason for this to occur, not based on this little move here that's possibly three waves here, um, because of the US dollar in in, in this uh, space. So uh, if we have a look at this on the, we're on a daily chart, if we look at it, say on an hourly chart, we'll see that, we'll see that, I mean, I've got it as wave four, so I just couldn't really get five, I could squeeze five waves in there, just sort of made better that way, but it still doesn't really matter, we've got this nice big correction here, so this is really quite big, for, you know, if this is going to be wave one, and this is going to be wave two, wave two should be smaller, <coughs> but um, we'll just run with it for the time, but you can see here is one, two, and they're going up for the third wave here, you, not quite to the top three, four, five. Now it could be wave four here, um, and we go further up up here, but I would imagine this would move in line with the US dollar. So we're looking for the US dollar to, um, it's in its final stages uh, through here. So let's just go and look at the US dollar. We can see where that is up to at this point. So this is the US dollar here on the daily chart. And I just need to talk about this a little bit. I mean, my natural instinct was to put wave one here, two here, and then all the way down for three. We can talk about that in a moment, and four and five down here, and then look for an A wave, a B wave, and a C wave up here for that uh, for wave two. And that's all sort of possible, and we have made a new low down here and so on. But uh, with a lot of the other markets, we haven't made that there. If I look at the... Um, the in, uh, Invesco uh, dollar fund here, we can see that the B wave hasn't made a new low here. And we've also always noted that just on a subtle level that we had these five waves up here that in my, in, in my mind were quite uh, well, a strong case for being five waves. It wasn't, it wasn't iffy. And, um, and then this move down through here is one, two, three, four, five here. Um, uh, and then the A, the B here, so the corrective move. And then we've been looking at this here. Now, I could put wave two over here and have this as wave one with an A, B, C pattern over here for wave two. Um, but either way, you, I mean, it's a little bit difficult to read this, but with this strong move up here, it does represent a nice third wave. And third waves normally come in around the top here. They start getting sold off, of course. And then we'll have our fourth wave here and our fifth wave here. So that would give that extra leg. Um, in the for, for the for the yields um, 10 year yields to the upside and then have this here as the a the b and the c wave here now um, the other thing with this is the uh, to support this case here not having this low in place here there would be the uh <clears throat> the dollar yen here so also the dollar yen never made a new low down here and in this case we can look at it as the a the b and the c wave up here um, obviously if you're trading this the 138 and the 140 are going to give you a bit of a hard time um, there should be some sort of classic trading levels pattern across here before we push up but you can sort of see that we're kind of towards the end of this situation here for the dollar yen <clears throat> Now, obviously, I've broken a few rules. Wave four is overlapping wave one. Um, you could count it up as you could, you know, you could do a few different things with it. But um, yeah, just sort of bringing everything into line is also important as well. Um, but the A, the B, and the C wave up here. So we've got this space up here while the US dollar is uh, is pushing up here. Obviously, that's going to put you know pressure on on certain markets, um, some more than others um, as such. Um, but anyway, that's the case for the A, the B and the C. Now I want to go back to the uh, 
the US dollar here that didn't make a new low down, that made a new low down here, it made a new low down here. So when we look at the other markets, I need to put wave A over there for them and put this wave one over here. That means I need to put wave two over here for this. And I need to bring this over uh, to here, to here, to here, and put it in like this here, and then look at this as the B wave down here as one as an ABC to this particular point here, and then look at this as a C wave to the upside over here looking at this as one and two so these are the things that are going through my mind in a way so um we, we can go in and have a look at this five wave structure here so in a way we're kind of you know going in this this is a pretty good case <coughs> because we basically want gold to turn up as well gold and silver and so on so this is the you know this move up to the old high here is pretty much the the um <coughs> the move that we're sort of looking for but i understand that because it made a new low i'll just need to be careful that um this is not the a wave over here for this i don't think it's the case but um and this is this this the euro dollar also in reverse made a you know a top um you know, ab above its previous top top here, but we're also looking at that in the same light as well. Um, we're seeing, because of this, we're seeing a little bit weirdness in some of like gold, for instance, in its uh, uh, ABC pullback as well. So it's kind of showing up in other markets in different ways and affecting them in different ways. So yeah, anyway, we'll be a little bit philosophical about it, but that's what I'm sort of looking at. So when you're looking at nickel and and copper and all of those sort of things they're still going to be under pressure to the downside here you know while this is moving up here the only one that's not being affected by this at the moment is um it's lithium so the lithium would be the best sort of long trade at the moment in in my humble opinion <clears throat> but let's just go in and have a quick look at this on going from one day to two thousand ticks and that's the wave one here that we're just talking about and putting wave two all the way over here i could put another green wave one in here <coughs> but it's not really giving me the, the best impulse wave to the upside it's more like a three wave move here i could put this over to here as well and um and, and so on there's a few little tweaks that could be made here so i just need to tread lightly in in what I do here, all I can say is that um, we're moving to the upside. This way four we could put here, but we could also bring it back over here to the 38.2% retracement level here. So we'll just sort of watch that. But I also understand too that 38's down here somewhere. So I also understand that, you know, it's quite normal to have a classic trading levels pattern at the top of group one. So that would be the arrival, the reaction, the first high above the level, the ABC pattern here and then up. So really we're not, if, let's just say that it's done here for a moment. It may or may not be, we may get another leg down here and then do it. But basically what will happen is we'll get some high here, either from here to here, whatever. And then we're gonna see some type of correction here. And then we're gonna see a move up here. So it's not really, it's gonna kind of um, just get stuck here. So while this is going into wave fours here, we're going to see the same thing in some of the other markets that really, some markets reflect this more so than others, um, such as the precious metals reflect this. So we could say that um, we're in wave fours for gold and silver. Now we could put wave four for here for, for gold or silver or here in, in that case too there, you know, because wave fours are tricky. They can have three waves in the first move down and we've got three waves in the first move down here. So there's different... Uh, there's different ways to to view all of this. I could look at that as five ways too, I guess. But anyway, breaks a few rules. But <clears throat> anyway, um, we've still got more upside here. That's the thing. Okay, so we're not there. When this comes into play here, you know, it might not be perfect in a lot of markets. And you know, there's 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 mistakes that I can easily make. You know, on an intraday basis here. Um, but I'll keep working on it and keep bringing it, keep herding it in and all the rest of it. But basically when this comes into line here and we get our first um, impulse wave down here, you know, we can see that we get five waves down, then um, 
you know, then uh, there'll be lots of things to trade on the long side at that point, you know. <clears throat> I have to hedge some dollars myself. Um, okay, so um, that's the dollar. I'm just going to push that to the side. So with nickel here, um, we kind of want to make a, um, a new low below here. So I'm counting down. Obviously, this is the third wave here. <clears throat> we could view these ones and twos in different ways here, um, but it makes a nice wave four here. We've been working through that for a while, and it's been sort of breaking down, and you can see we've got nice one and two, and this is one, two, three, four, five, the third. There'll be the fourth here, like, like we said with um, uh, the dollar um, just a moment ago. So there'll be some sort of wave. Well, no, I'm just not interested in this market, but... Um, not not to there's there's nothing to buy here at the moment you know it's definitely coming down further so we don't have to do anything and uh yeah but anyway that's where we are with uh nickel so i'm just going to put that out of the way here somewhere and uh this is copper so <coughs> As you know, with copper, um, we were looking at this being wave one, two, three, and four over here, but now it's pulled down too much and it's overlap wave one or wave A here. So we've, it's forced to be an A wave, a B wave, and a C wave. The only way it can be bullish is wave one here, two here, wave one here, and then putting wave two over here. Is that possible to have one, one here and two here? Sure. I mean, like when you think about... Um, the US dollar having one more leg down, that's, you know, it's possible. But the thing I don't like about this is being wave one here and two here. Wave two is starting to look too big compared to wave one. So it's probably better off as an A wave, a B wave and a C wave down here somewhere. <clears throat> or maybe even some triangle, you know, a, a, B, C, D and E over here for some sort of larger wave four sort of thing, you know. So we'll just keep an eye on it. But all I could say at this point is, you know, copper stocks like, you know, BHP and stuff, they're just, we can't buy them. You know, it's just can't, no can do. Um, we need an impulse wave to the upside or we need support on the closest, largest number. And uh, yeah, so I was expecting this to, you know, come down and, and rally back, but it may be one and two and one and two here and so on. But it's, it's under pressure at this point, you know, and it's likely to come down further. So um, no real long trades uh, at that point. Um, even shorting it, I'm not that keen on sort of shorting it really. So um, the other one just before we go to the energy sector is I just want to have a look at, um, at lithium, but this, you know, there's obviously Australian stocks and you kind of know where they are and so on. But I wanted to point out this one here. This is um, this is called Sparks. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to talk about this for a moment. So we can see at the top here, we've got um, an ABC pattern here, then one, two, three, four, five. So that's the top. Yeah. Then we've got this move down here, which would be wave A and then B and then one, two, three, four, five. So we've got an ABC correction here. So, yeah, I mean, it's the problem with this is that, um, you know, what you see here is not what you get next in that case. But we should be taking that top out here because that's not five waves down here. <clears throat> that's three waves down. So we should be taking out that top. Now, the trick with this, though, is that um, we know that we're going into the supply zone at the moment i mean you know you know these australian stocks that you've been looking at you know uh pilbara and and um what's the other one um leo and lion town and so on um so but the point being here is that this move up here has, has, has been a nice move but it's hitting supply now, really. You know, it's hitting the resistance at this point. So we can just pretty much grab this and grab this and we'll be, that's the 61.8% just sitting here at that 130. We also know 130 is the top of group one, so of 100. So that means that we'd need to get support on this 
point up here. So there'd be a classic trading levels pattern here. But it's just to point out that, you know, you may be able to find some stocks that, you know, um, because there's leaders and there's followers, but this particular here, Sparks here, that this will probably have, um, I can't remember now, but it's probably got some tech stocks in there as well. So that kind of makes it a little bit more sort of interesting. You get a nice blend of uh, of the NASDAQ and, and the lithium in there together, I suppose. So, you know, probably a bit of Samsung's in there and that sort of stuff. So, uh, yeah, anyway, that's the... Um, <coughs> the lithium the lithium side and I think we're doing gold a little bit later uh, after the energy here it's just the way I put them out but <clears throat> um, so with crude oil we have made a new low down here so we could look at this here as an A an ABC for the B wave and then up for the C wave here <clears throat> There was a good case to count this up at three waves as well. So we could see view it in in another way as an as an A, B, C, D, and E up here, and then down at this point. Even if that was wave four and wave five here, then we need to be, you know, we need to tread carefully with all of this. We can count five waves up here. So that always meant to me that we would, you know, pull back and then we could push up again from that point. And this is kind of what we're doing. We'll talk about that in a moment. But getting five waves here should give us five waves over here. But that's the 61.8%. So this market, you know, we could look at this whole move down as also, you know, we could look at it as a triangle, but we could also look at it as wave one here and then an A and a B and a C over here for for wave two and then coming down at this point. So we need to be a bit careful about that situation. Um <clears throat> uh yeah we don't need to panic about that but because we've got five here and then then it looks like we've got this uh one two three four five here and then then we, now we've got this here's a little a b and c in here so that's good we talked about last time we spoke i don't know if it was yesterday or the day before or whatever but we're talking about getting the first high above the level on 22 here so if you wanted to you could go long at this point it is a little bit of a risk because oh not really it should be okay but um you could do a part position there oh uh, yeah i'll just put that in there then so like a quarter of you know do a quarter position there and then the other position should be over here on top of group one so you see how you got these little spikes here they're they're part of the setup aren't they so that's what we would look for over here we'd look for something that would give us that little first high above the level and we'll try to improve on that a little bit and we should see something like that and we will be taking some money off the table at five uh, here for this i have moved the stop up here now because we can view that as uh, three waves you could probably even bring it up into this point here but the trouble with oil I mean I always find it so difficult to trade and that's why I'm not that keen on doing the analysis on it because it's just a spiky gnarly little critter you know it's flowing okay at the moment um, <clears throat> but I do find it very difficult to um, to get high consistency on it you know I mean I know when you know when we start doing the stock trades again I'll be flicking through hundreds of stocks and I just eyeball them you know like give them a second or half a second or something and and I'm just really looking for something that's that's running smoothly you know that's not going to you know um but yeah I mean this is running smoothly it's nice you know it's come and sat on the 7000 and it's been well behaved and it's climbing it's on you know the 100 here became as you know from this side anyway we've got our five waves up and so we can see you know that it's, cl it's climbing in it's giving the right patterns for a bullish move it's sitting on the levels nicely there's nothing sort of you know, you know, gnarly about it, spiky about it, everything seems to be pretty cool. Um, so we're on the right track and we're sort of heading higher. Um, but just for just for a little bit here, until that number two becomes settled, so that because you know, um, I don't want to move my stop up until the next level, which is the two here, the seven, the what are we, oil seventy two. This is a CFD product, so it's priced a bit differently. So the 72 here, once that becomes the tested support, and that would be a tested support once that top is taken out, then you can move it up to that point. Okay, let's move along a little bit to um, to gas. And with gas here, yes, <coughs> I think a little while ago yesterday maybe <laughs> um we talked about taking money off the top here i've had all sorts of 
trades coming in from from here and here and all the rest of it but we understood we had one two three four five up here so now we're going to be looking at it could be the a the b and the c here and we could put that in here that could be the end of it but i don't know that yet so we're just going to chill uh, we could end up getting you know four and five here and then an abc pattern up here coming hitting supply and then coming down here again <clears throat> I, I i don't know um but we're leaving the stop out of the way um definitely take you know, yesterday definitely take something off the table um, and if you don't want to go through all of this, then take it all off and we'll find a way back in over here for that. So we're still working this whole thing. Um, so we'll just continue to do that. Um, the other point for taking money off the top here is just simply that the move from this low here coming up here as an A wave, a B wave and a C wave up here is quite valid. We could be in some triangle pattern uh, here <coughs> as well. A little bit unlikely but i'm just looking at different ways of <clears throat> looking at things so um it doesn't matter at this point in time um and it won't complicate things but uh yeah that you would have been warned been warning 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 uh, warning will um so that's uh that's where that is um and over to the uh precious metal so silver here so we're looking at wave one up here with an A and a B and one, two and three, four, five coming down here. Now, it does look like a little five wave move here, but there is overlap there. So we could probably put wave four in here, bit Arthur Martha, I'm not quite sure. <clears throat> it's also possible in this case for silver to have this wave three sitting here because it just looks and feels right, you know. Um, and having that wave too low in here, but it still doesn't make. I, you know, we we we. Uh, I'd need to see more price action over here before we went long. So, as far as the crow flies, we we could go up here, and if we moved up here after five waves up here, then we can go long at that point. <gasps> Otherwise, we'll end up, you know, having five down here or five down here, that type of thing. We're not ready to go long, right? <clears throat> we're not we're not clear on on that. Definitely not. Definitely not going long here. Okay, <laughs> we, we just the we just allow that to mature and play out, and probably drop from where the US dollar is. There'd definitely be a bounce off the three, by the way. So if you wanted to buy, you would buy on the three. But that's something that I don't do. I want a, I want a proper trade setup. I want to be able to manage my risk. I don't want to be a loose cannon. Um, I'm trying to be a big boy about it. Um, correct my mistakes and so on. <clears throat> now gold the same as well the a wave here the uh, sorry one here the a the b and the c wave over here um i'm thinking this is wave four if i've got this wrong and we get a you know a tested support on the 2000 well then we're going to go long but until that happens um and where the us dollar is where it is then we're still coming down here now <clears throat> I've got, as i mentioned before i've got wave one here and two here we could have it as one and two and one and two here the rest of it's all pretty straightforward uh, so that's the only <clears throat> the only glitch there at that point so we've, we've got one more move down here um so the extensions in wave three here so wave well there's trouble with the spikes you know as i mentioned before, i'd like to put that over here that makes more sense to me putting it here um but still um <clears throat> anyway that's that so nothing to be had here at the moment for um for that this is uh gdx here same same here so we're still looking for look the way four could get more complicated here do you know what i mean it could do something like this and this but we're still coming down okay so it's uh it's not over at this point you know and even when it gets over here what we want to see is that yeah sure it's going to get all you know a lot of support's going to come in around this area here and um so but what we want to see is we want to see it could be this size we did we wanted something to get our teeth into so we want that first little five waves to the upside don't think you're missing anything because you're not you're just confirming that there's a change in trend with a five wave with an impulse wave in the opposite direction and then we can work a level always a, you know a, a trading level the abc pattern if it triggers in then we can bring our stop from here to here halve our risk and we got our first position in here now the thing at that point we don't know if this is just going to be an a b and c and collapse at that point or it's going to turn into a larger impulse wave we can do a few little 
you know, dances here and there and, and, and sort things out. But this is the initial point here for this. That way we can, you know, we've, <clears throat> we've got some rules to go by, um, which makes it easier. You know what I mean? It's such an emotional situation, the markets, you know. Once your money goes in there, you know, basically you're in there with it then, you know. Um, anyway, that's GDX. So that's all good and dusted there. <clears throat> and um, Newcrest Mining for... Um, uh, for uh, this has been taken over by Newmont, um, this company, but it's the same thing here. It'll be the same with a lot of stocks, the A, the B, and the C. So if you've got a gold stock around the world, then we're not there yet, you know, that's the thing. Um, could it get bigger down to here? This is the 61.8%. Yeah, it's possible. This is why we've got to keep an eye on it. It could be one, two, and, and three, four, and five down here just for the A wave, the B wave here, and then the C wave here. You know, these are the things we need to be a little bit careful about, you know. So we'll just be careful as we go along here and we'll know the weak spots and we'll duck and dive and weave and do those things and look at other markets. We'll see where the US dollar is and those sort of things. And, you know, we'll piece it all together because we could just go straight up from here. You know, that's the other thing. So, uh, yeah, I think I just need to leave it at that at the moment. That's just the Aussie index, which is uh, looks a bit like a... A mess. Um, so that's that. Alrighty. Um, thanks for tuning in. Cheers.